Hi everyone, welcome to another interesting session on Big Data Technologies. Today let's explore how to connect talent to Cassandra and save some data. Instead of saving some data, let's explore how we can utilize HL7 formatted data and extract a couple of uh, columns out of that and save it in Cassandra. Let's have a quick introduction to these two new technologies. Cassandra is one of the very popular NoSQL database and I'll cover that in detail in another session. HL7, which stands for Health Level 7, is a set of international standards for transferring clinical and administrative data between software applications used by various healthcare providers. To begin with, let's look at HL7 data format. One of the sections in uh, HL7 is patient identification, which lists all the details of the patient, such as patient ID, name, address, phone, gender, etc. For our purpose, let's just pull uh, first name and last name of the patient and then gender and let's try to send this data to Cassandra. We will need a sample HL7 file to import in our uh, talent. GitHub has a sample file that you can download. You can go to this raw and download this file by saving it as. I, sh I will include all these uh, URLs in the description below. Let's import this file into talent. I'll create a new job called HL7 Cassandra. We will need a HL7 component. Let me find it. HL7 input. First time we need to download the HL7 component. Except all. Let's load our HL7 file. I go to multi schemas editor. And here I will choose the file that I just downloaded. And it is my HL7. I open it. And by default, it shows almost all the details because this specialized component is pre configured with HL7 format. I will choose PID, which is nothing but patient information. To figure out the exact elements that we need, let's switch back to our HL7 format page. Uh, patient's name here, which has XPN, which is nothing but extended person name section which will give us the first name and last name which is first and second sequence let's get back and we have uh, administrative sex which is nothing but gender which is under pid 8 okay pid 5 1 which had the first and last name okay this is supposed to be last name and is first name and we had gender in 81. So this it should be this one. Okay. So let's test if we got the data. So back and I take a T log row to check if I have all the data I needed. Let me connect its PID row only to T log row and I'll convert it to table format and let me run it error let me check it is failed validation rule do, do, do. okay maybe i'll just take off the validation that it is trying to do so first one component not validate hl7 message save and try again there we have it. Our John Smith mail data is here. To move this data into Cassandra, let's, let me first create a table that can hold this data. And before that, I need to launch Cassandra. I have installed local Cassandra instance, which is just single node. Okay, I think it's ready. Let's launch SQLSH uh, shell for Cassandra query language. I just want to create a table. I have already created the key space. Okay, so here is the query for creating the table. Let's check table select star from ss dot user. Yep, it is created. Let's note that I created another column here called PID, which is 
integer type, it's a primary key. We need a primary key for every table in Cassandra. Uh, we will also see how we can populate this, which is not coming from HL7 data. Okay, I need a T Cassandra output to store this data. I also need to bring in data for primary key. For that, I need a T map so that I can transform the data. And from T log row, I will send the data to T map. And from there, we will send it to Cassandra once we have the data we need. Get into T map. I, ha I already have these columns. So let me create the output called uh, Cassandra data. And in that, first of all, I'll put all the columns that I already have. And in addition, I'll need another column. For that I'll create an expression which will have a numeric sequence, sequence number, drag, okay, there. So its name is variable, so let me name it as P8. So we have one on one mapping. And then I take the output of this Cassandra data to and give it to Cassandra output. Let's configure Cassandra output. My Cassandra is in local host and default port. I don't need to change that. And key space is SS that I created earlier. Now, if you have a, a replication and all related to this ETL job, you can certainly choose these action on key space such as create key space if it does not exist and then choose the replication strategy that you would like to implement and also choose the data centers where you would like to see the, the replication done. And then finally, oh, in my case, I do not have any of these, so I will just choose none. And then I will have to enter the table name that we created, which was HL7 user. And then I'll just leave all these default, maybe we'll just choose none. And then action, I would like it to insert and save it. Let's run it. Data is transferred. Looks like it completed successfully. Let's check if we receive the data on Cassandra side. Go to SQL, let's search. And we have John Smith mail and the sequence ID that we generated using TMAP. So this concludes our session wherein we transformed the data which was coming from HL7 formatted file and also included a sequence number and sent it to Cassandra. I hope you learned something out of this session. If you have any technical queries or questions, write them in the comment section and I would love to respond. YouTube description below is limited only to text and I'll not be able to include any of the scripts. So I will include a link of my blog and in that blog, I will include all the scripts that were used in this video as well as other links. I used.